Imagine building a house where the air is so thin that you need an oxygen tank or on ice so unstable that it literally floats. Now imagine doing that with million dollar equipment while fighting off frostbite, sandstorms, or, you know, gravity. From oil rigs in the middle of the ocean to research stations in Antarctica and even out in space, here's a compilation of the most extreme places humans have dared to build. At first glance, it may seem like a multi-million dollar mansion that you see in Architectural Digest videos, but you can't be more wrong, not about the price tag, but the purpose of this structure. This is a $100 million research station in Antarctica owned by Brazil. After a devastating fire destroyed the previous station in 2012, there was a void that needed to be filled. The fire had destroyed 70% of the previous station and also claimed the lives of two Brazilian officers. In April of 2013, the Brazilian Institute of Architects announced a design competition for the new facility. Out of a total of 100 submissions, this one won the design. The new station is located on King George Island, specifically on the Keller Peninsula. It's strategically positioned 10 feet above sea level and approximately 100 feet from the shoreline to minimize environmental impact. The facility is organized into two main blocks, each assigned specific functions. The upper block contains living quarters, cabins, dining and service areas, while the lower one houses laboratories, operational and maintenance zones. All of this adds up to an area of 48,000 square feet. And let's not forget, the average temperature of this area is a negative 2.8 Celsius. In Antarctica, the winds have almost the same speed as a high-speed train. Moreover, the constant snow quickly piles up and buries the buildings beneath it. These were the set of problems presented to Estudio Quarenta Iam, the winning design firm of the competition. They put together a team of 15 experts in several areas, from wind resistance to geotechnics to thermal insulation. What they came up with was a revolutionary design that's both functional and sleek. The steel structure contains an exterior of polyurethane and an insulating interior of mineral wool. This material can not only withstand the extreme temperature, but also resist winds up to 200 kilometers per hour. Between the external and internal layer, there is a 60 centimeter gap, which helps with temperature transition on both sides. To solve the snow accumulation problem, the entire facility was built on steel pillars called stilts. This is something that the old station lacked. Moreover, the elevated design allows the wind to sweep beneath and not wrestle with the structure. The crazy thing is that this station wasn't constructed on site, it was just assembled. Because of the extreme conditions, engineers had to rely on pre-built modules manufactured in Shanghai, China. They were then shipped to Antarctica during the summer months when the ocean was less frozen. All modules were later assembled on site. The Brazilian team truly nailed it on frozen land. As this marvel sits on ice, there's another one thousands of miles away braving the waves. This time, not on land, but afloat in the deep sea. This is the world's deepest floating oil platform, located in the Gulf of Mexico. It's a spar platform anchored 8,000 feet in deep waters. It serves as a production hub for three deep water fields, namely Great White, Silver Tip, and Tobago. The platform can process about 100,000 barrels of crude oil per day. The main cylindrical spar hull is more than 500 feet long and 85 feet in diameter. All this adds up to the staggering weight of 22,000 tons. To match this weight, you would have to take at least two Eiffel Towers on the other side of the equation. The platform has three decks. One supports the oil processing units, the other hosts a drilling rig, and the last one has living quarters. This platform typically hosts about 170 workers. Seems like a mini town on the sea. Now we are pretty sure you must be wondering, how on earth was this built? To answer this, we need to understand its basic structure. The Perdido oil rig is a spar-type floating oil platform. This means its main supporting structure is a large vertical, cylindrical hull that floats in deep water and is anchored to the seafloor with mooring lines. The spar was built in Finland and then transported 8,000 miles by barge from the Baltic Sea to the Gulf of Mexico. Upon arrival, the spar was floated and towed horizontally to its final site above the Alaminos Canyon. It was then anchored to the seafloor using nine taut leg mooring lines, which were individually installed into the seabed using remotely operated vehicles. 
As for the top part, it was constructed later on. The final touches were completed in 2009, and the platform has been operational ever since. Up next on our list is a structure that battles temperatures below freezing points, abnormal blizzards and wind with speeds more than 200 kilometers per hour. That's literally living on the edge. We are talking about the Bharati Station. It's a permanent Indian research station located in Larsman Hills, the actual edge of Antarctica. From a distance, it looks like a DVD player, and there's a very specific reason as to why. The whole research station is made from shipping containers. That's unbelievable, right? It's basically the IKEA of polar stations. The station comprises three floors built using 134 shipping containers, which were interlocked and covered by an insulated skin and outer shell. The exterior is wrapped in a highly insulated aluminum skin and windows are triple glazed so at least no one is missing out on the views. Much like its Brazilian counterpart, the station is built on steel columns supported by 83 injection piles anchored into the rocky ground. These shipping containers were prefabricated in Germany before being shipped 5,000 kilometers to the actual site. Once on site, these containers were assembled in just four months. That's a record in itself. The main building houses laboratories, storage, technical spaces, and living quarters. There's also a terrace on the third level, which is used for scientific experiments. Apart from already having a small footprint, the Bharati is also fully self-sufficient. All hazardous and sanitary waste generated is collected and shipped back to India for safe disposal in compliance with the Protocol on Environmental Protection to the Antarctic Treaty. According to this treaty, Antarctica is described as a natural reserve that's dedicated to the peace and science. That's why there's a huge emphasis on minimizing foreign materials being brought into the region. This is the reason why there's a rat race to create a minimal waste station in the most innovative way possible. In 2010, an architect dared to do such a thing. He published a design for a research facility that doesn't require a single outside material for construction. The architect's name is David Garcia. His idea was to create a research station inside a giant iceberg, a super large iceberg with an approximate area of 2.5 square kilometers will be chosen for this purpose. The entire facility will be holed out using caterpillar excavators that are traditionally used to clear snow. This facility will be complete with all the necessities of life. There will be conference halls, a main hall, a canteen, a kitchen, and eight to nine living rooms. The iceberg station could host 100 people at a time. The entrance will be via a ramp, one dedicated to pedestrians and the other for vehicles. To efficiently utilize space, all the living rooms will be clustered around a common hall. Containers would transport food and reusable solar cells and also store waste and gray water residue, which can be shipped off regularly. Now, a common objection would be, what would happen if the iceberg melts? Well, that's the plan. David estimated that it will take seven to 10 years for such an iceberg to melt. Most polar research stations are temporary and have to be removed after their tenure ends. David's plan completely removes the need to break a structure and ship its components back. Moreover, since the research station is fully inside the iceberg, the pristine beauty of the region is also preserved. For now, this design is merely a speculation, but it was worth discussing. After all, underground structures are getting all the hype. Here's another groundbreaking construction that's fully underneath the ground. We have talked about China a lot on this channel, and that's simply because the country keeps pushing the limits of what's possible. In 2019, they rolled out a plan to expand their deepest underground lab. The lab is located 8,000 feet below ground in the Jinping Mountains in China. It's used for cutting edge research in particle physics, astrophysics, and related fields. Much of it is to screen materials for extremely low levels of radioactivity. With its current expansion plan, the lab will now have a new and exciting role. It will be a frontier for the direct detection of dark matter. Dark matter is an elusive substance believed to make up over 80% of all matter in the universe, but it has never been directly observed. The laboratory's immense depth dramatically reduces background noise from cosmic rays and natural radiation, which is essential for any sensitive dark matter experiment. Moreover, the conventional cave walls are almost one meter thick, this reduces any effect on the outside world. 
Worldwide, this lab is considered one of the cleanest research sites. It's always interesting how scientists have to work in the most extreme environments to study the weird phenomena of nature. And to help them achieve that, the engineers have to really wreck their brains to come up with just the perfect design. This next project is a perfect example of that. Perched at 16,000 feet, we have the ALMA Observatory. ALMA stands for Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array. It consists of 66 radio antennas working together to act like a single massive telescope. Its extreme location, dry, remote, and high above sea level, offers crystal clear skies with almost no humidity, making it perfect for detecting faint signals from the most distant parts of the universe. This includes observing star formation in distant galaxies, molecular clouds and dust in the early universe, and the even black holes. Costing about $1.4 billion, it is the most expensive ground-based telescope in operation. The Atacama Desert is the driest place on Earth. Some weather stations in the region have never recorded rain, and the area experienced centuries without significant rainfall. This is the reason why the sky is exceptionally clear, allowing for 95% observable time. Because of these properties, the Atacama Desert is already a favorite among space researchers. Apart from ALMA, this place is also about to host the world's largest optical telescope. Aptly known as the Extremely Large Telescope, its dimension are extremely wild. It has five mirrors and the primary one has a diameter of 128 feet. This enormous mirror will enable the telescope to gather about 10 times more light than the largest existing optical telescopes and about 250 times the light gathering area of the Hubble Space Telescope. The protective dome housing the ELT measures 300 feet in diameter and is more than 200 feet tall. One of the major challenges was to keep the mirrors in their precise place and also keep the structure from crumbling under its own weight. To achieve that, the engineers built a foundational support for the structure. As of early 2025, the dome's frame and one of its two giant sliding doors have been installed, marking the project more than 60% complete. This is truly a marvel on its own. If you're interested in extreme engineering, we have a bunch of videos just for you. Anyway, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out.